in the unfruitful deeds of darkness, but rather expose them. For the things they do in secret are shameful, even to mention. But all things being exposed by the light are made visible. For everything made visible is light. And for this reason, it says, Awake, O sleeper, rise from the dead, and Christ will shine on you. Therefore, consider carefully how you live, not as unwise, but as wise. Let us pray. Eternal God, our Father, we thank and praise you, O Heavenly Father, for another day's journey. Another opportunity, Lord God, to be in the land of the living. As we come and come, O God, and realize it's only by your grace, your love, and your mercy that we're here. And Father God, we're going through something that we've never experienced before. With this pandemic that has seemingly paralyzed our nation and the world, we come asking, oh God, that you continue to be with us and bless us and help us to navigate this situation. Father God, we place our fears, our thoughts, and all that we have in your hands. Bless us now to be a blessing to one another. Help us to continue to love each other through it all. And help us to focus on you. For there's no other name on this sound of heaven that would do us any good. We thank you for all that you've done. We're thankful for all that you're doing. And we're thankful, Lord of God, for those precious promises that are waiting for us on the other side of the room. In Jesus' name, amen. <laughs>
to turn your attention to the epistle of Ephesians chapter 5 verses 15 and 16. See then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time, because the days are evil. I'd like to use for a subject this morning, time is not on your side, but God is. Time is not on your side, but God is. The book of Ephesians was written to God's holy people in Ephesus. The city of Ephesus was a large commercial port city in Asia Minor, which is present-day Turkey, located at the mouth of Seister River near the Aegean Sea. As a large population center on a major trade route and the capital of Roman province of Asia, Ephesus was considered the gateway to Asia. Additionally, the city of Ephesus was known as a center of pagan worship as the temple of the Greek goddess Artemis, Roman goddess Diana, considered one of the seven wonders of the ancient world, was located just outside the city limits. As such, people from across the region traveled to Ephesus to visit the temple and an industry of blacksmiths served them by creating triplets and statues of the goddess. Additionally, Ephesus was home to a large community of Jews who had a synagogue in the city. In this morning's letter to the members of the Ephesian church, the writer celebrates the life of the church and the faith and love of its members. He reiterates the premise of grace and the importance of prudence. He exhorts its members to continue growing and laboring in God's vineyard, doing work that can only be accomplished by the power of the Holy Spirit and salvation by faith through grace and grace alone. And he admonishes them to be mindful of Satan's lurking presence and persistence, thereby admonishing them to arm themselves, use their weaponry, remain an ever-present force because Satan's agenda remains the same and he is more determined than ever because his days are numbered and in a little while, our Savior will return in a cloud and meet us, and he will judge the quick and the dead. When Billy Graham preaches on the second coming, he often told a story of a grandfather clock whose chimes rang every hour, once for one o'clock, twice for two o'clock, and so on. One night, the clock malfunctioned, causing the chimes to ring 13 times. A little boy heard it and raced through his house yelling, get up, get up, get up everyone. It's later than it's ever been. How true that is. It's later than it's ever been and in 2020, we are closer to the coming of Christ than ever before. The writer of Ecclesiastes tells us that there is nothing new under the sun. The race is not swift, nor the battle to the strong, nor the bread to the wise, nor riches to the intelligent, nor favor the skillful, but time and chance happens to them all. So here we are midway through 2020, facing COVID-19, police murder and brutality, narcissistic leadership in the White House, a failing and unstable economy, sickness and death, death and dying. Romans 13, 11 tells us, this is all the more urgent, for you know how late it is. Time is running out. Satan's desire is to kill, steal, and destroy. Who 
and what he can. It is said that an idle mind is Satan's workshop, so we must be ever mindful to watch and pray and to redeem our time as best we can because the day is evil. We are running out of time. A.W. Tozer says, Time is a resource that is non-renewable and non-transferable. You cannot store it, slow it up, hold it up, divide it up, or give it up. You can't hoard it up or save it for a rainy day. When it's lost, it's unrecoverable. When you kill time, remember that it has no resurrection. Have you ever heard the expression that time is money? Well, according to Ray Pritchard, time is money. Time is money. And researchers tell us that time is the new currency. Today, time is more important than money. People will spend money to save time, whereas earlier generations raised during the Depression would spend money to save time. In a world where most of us feel stressed out, we value our free time more than a few extra dollars in our pockets. But it is not true. Time is much more valuable than money. It may be hard to make more money, but it can be done. But it is totally impossible to make time. Time is more valuable than money. And at a graduation commencement at his alma mater, Wheaton College, Billy Graham said, time is the capital that God has given us to invest. People are the stocks in which we are to invest our time, whether they are blue chips or penny stocks or even junk bonds. In the form of an acronym, I'm going to offer some suggestions for how to redeem the time. Treasure time. Live by his time directly, giving account for how you spend God's time. Benjamin Franklin said, do not squander time, for it is the stuff life is made of. 90th Psalm, verses 1 through 4 says, Lord, you have been our dwelling place throughout all generations. Before the mountains were born, or you brought forth the whole world, from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. You turn people back to dust, saying, return to dust, you mortals. A thousand years in your sight are like a day that is just gone by, or like a watch in the night. Treasure every moment that you have. It has been said that yesterday is history, today is mystery, tomorrow is mystery, and today is a gift, and that's why we call it a present or the present. While the blood is still running warm in your veins, use the gift of time to examine yourself and determine where you stand with God. Are you walking or living in the light? or in darkness. This is a black and white issue. This is a matter of values. There is no gray area. Gray is a hue, not a value. Gray is shady. It's a little bit of this and a little bit of that, but no commitment. And I'm not talking about compromise. Having been washed in the blood of the Lamb and dressed in righteousness made new? Or are you clothed in sin or lukewarm? like the Laodiceans, dressed for success and bound for failure, and in need of God's cleansing and healing for your life and your soul. Are you the church, or are you playing church, or just coming to church and going through the motions? To everything there is a season. Do you know what season you're in? Every day we hear of thousands of people dying, multitudes, and I'm sure many of them didn't expect to get sick, didn't expect to get COVID, didn't expect to die. Some didn't redeem their time. Many intended to turn 
to God tomorrow, but they are gone today, dead in their sins. If you learn that your death day is coming up soon, will you be fearful or at peace about dying? Hell is full of good intentions. Invest time. Live life with the purpose of glorifying God. Find out and do what he has for you to do and give it your best. Do it for his glory. See then that you walk circumspectly, blameless, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming, making the best use of the time because the days are evil. Be vigilant and ask God to help you see as he sees and to recognize a divine appointment, a rainbow word, an open door, a way of escape from temptation, a call to salvation, a call to discipleship, a call to service, an opportunity to forgive, an opportunity to seek forgiveness, an opportunity to love, to everything there is a season. Look upon us with the same rose-colored lenses that God sees us and labor in his vineyard with a mindset to harvest the people that we can for the Lord. When an opportunity passes, it can't be reclaimed. It is gone forever. Redeem the time. Manage time. A time management expert was teaching a seminar for executives. He placed a large, clear, open mouth jar in front of the group. And next he put seven or eight large rocks into the jar until it was full. Is the jar full, he asked. Everyone nodded. Then he took pebbles and filled up the jar with the small rocks until they reached the rim. Is the jar full? By now, they didn't answer. So he poured fine sand in. Is the jar full? By now, they didn't answer. Some nodded. He proceeded to take a pitcher of water and filled up the jar again. What's the lesson about time management, he asked. Hands shot up and everyone agreed. No matter how busy you are, you can always fit more things into your schedule. Wrong, he replied. The lesson is, unless you put the big rocks in first, they will never fit in. You must figure out what the big rocks are for you. What are the big rocks in your life? Giving time to God, giving time to your marriage and to your children. If you don't put those big rocks in first, someone else will fill up your jar. You can't make time or save time, but you can and will spend time. And how you do that defines your priorities. Manage your time with godly wisdom, Holy Ghost intelligence, and reasonable prudence. Live each day as if it may be your last. Protect your mind, protect your spirit and your soul by managing your time the same way that you are protecting your body from COVID-19. And then enjoy time. Remember that God is the creator and the giver of time. Take time to show yourself and others the love that loved you first. Do you, do you, but do meaningful and unselfish and loving things, things that you know are pleasing to God, esteeming others more highly than yourself. Create and maintain balance in your life, your mind, your body, your spirit, and your soul. Treat yourself to pleasurable things and experiences, not being carried away by worldly pleasure, but remembering that while we were yet in our sin, Christ died for us, that we might have a right to the tree of life, that he hung on Calvary's tree and shed his blood so that we could have life 
and have it more abundantly. For everything, there is a season. Do you know what time it is? If you don't know, you better find out because time is not on your side, but God is. The Lord knows who it is. Let everyone who calls on the name of the Lord turn away from wickedness. Today, if you hear God's voice and if you hear him knocking on the doors of your heart, know that Roman 10, 9 says that if you confess your, with your mouth and believe in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead, you shall be saved. And it really is that simple. Amen. Share the video with family members or friends, or even start your own watch party. I'd also like to invite you to join us by Facebook Live on Wednesday, July the 15th at the hour of 7 p.m. for Bible study. We're truly grateful for those that continue to give to this ministry financially, especially during these hard economic times. If you would like to give, please send your check or money order to the St. James Baptist Church, or you can give online via our church's website Use a Giveify. To learn how, please watch the short video following the service. Until next time, be blessed. Givelify is giving simplified. Givelify is the simplest, most beautiful way to give and track donations to the place of worship or charity of your choice. You're not limited to the cash you have on hand. There's no need to write checks, and there are no complicated forms to fill out or text message codes to remember. Givelify automatically pinpoints your location and intelligently identifies the fundraiser, worship service, or conference you're attending without the need to search. Since Givelify automatically detects where you are, making a donation can be completed in as few as three taps. Tap 1. Use one of the pre-configured denominations to choose your donation amount. Tap 2. Select the campaign to which you'd like to contribute. Tap 3. With your stored credit or debit card, complete your donation in one tap and get an immediate donation receipt. Setting up recurring giving is a simple two-tap process. Tap the frequency you'd like and you'll never forget to make your gift. Givelify lets you easily see your complete donation history. Mark the place of worship you normally attend as your home for quick one-tap access. Givelify. Tap. Give. Done.